Hey guys, my name is Maria Clara and today we are in Lisbon, Portugal. Welcome to Places to Go. Lisbon is the stunning capital city of Portugal and is one of the most charismatic and vibrant cities in Europe. It is a city that effortlessly blends traditional heritage with striking modernism and progressive thinking. As a holiday destination, Lisbon offers a rich and varied history, a buzzing nightlife and is blessed with a glorious year-round climate. This episode will be a guide that will provide an introduction to Lisbon by answering some of the common questions that tourists may have. Get ready because this city is something magical. It almost feels like you're walking around an Art Nouveau painting. But why did we come to Lisbon? According to locals, Lisbon is a city of immigrants. It used to be a trading port. It also had some Lebanese heritage infused in its roots. The cobble streets and tiles that they are so famous for are actually adapted from the Arabs. Lisbon is a bustling and exciting city that boasts a wide choice of activities and fascinating tourist attractions. The city has a welcoming atmosphere while still embracing its deep-rooted heritage and extensive history. Lisbon will appeal to a diverse selection of ages. It is the perfect place for culture, nightlife, family holiday, or even just a relaxing beach trip to escape the chaos of city life. Oh, and of course, no matter where you are in the world, when you talk about this place, it's almost impossible not to mention pastel de nata. Don't worry, I'll explain what it is later on. Let's begin our journey. The best time of the year to visit Lisbon is in the late spring, May, June, when the days are bright and sunny but the temperatures are not so high. The peak season is between June and August, and if you visit at this time of year, you should expect the city to feel crowded. The weather is suitable for spending time on the beach from May until the end of September, so we did a great job choosing the perfect date. In our case, we didn't have much time here, but we still came up with a personal list of some of our favorite things to do in this city. We arrived in Lisbon at 3 in the afternoon, which conveniently aligned with our Airbnb check-in time. The apartment was beautiful and the location was perfect. We were just a few minutes away from the district of Alfama and a lot of highly recommended restaurants, which is always ideal. Our Airbnb had two bedrooms, a pretty nice bathroom and a large kitchen. The living room was perfect for resting and watching movies at night. But the best thing about it was definitely our host. He was awesome and even left us some wine to celebrate our travels. It's always so nice to feel so welcome. Speaking of wine, it's time to go and get something to drink. Let's go. Our first stop was in Alfama Celar, a very traditional place with delicious tapas, meats, and cheeses. The music and atmosphere was great for our first taste of the Lisbon culture. After a great meal and relaxing for a couple of minutes, we wanted to start exploring this amazing city. The Lisbon Cathedral, also called the Se, is a Roman Catholic church here in the city. Since the beginning of the construction of the cathedral in the year 1147, the building has been modified several times and survived many earthquakes, like the Great Earthquake of 1755, which left part of the religious edifice in ruins. Throughout the centuries, the cathedral has been renovated and rebuilt on various occasions. Nowadays, it's a mix of different architectural styles. 
This place has been classified as a national monument since 1910. If you're wondering how much it costs to get in, the good thing is that it's free. So you can go in and take your time. The weather this time of the year changes a lot. You have to be flexible when it starts raining. We decided to use it as an opportunity to do some local shopping. So we were just at the cathedral and I said I want to buy some really traditional Lisbon stuff. So we found this awesome place. It's called Alfama. It has beautiful things and I'm going to start my shopping. Portuguese manufacturers have been making ceramic goods for centuries. Chinese designs were popular throughout Europe and you can still see those influences in Lisbon ceramic shops woven through artistic motifs found in the bowls, dishes, and plates. In addition to the more rustic ceramics for sale, you can also pick up some very modern goods that are colorful and made in a variety of patterns. For art and ceramic lovers, this is the place to be. It's a block away from the cathedral and very easy to find. Okay, enough shopping. It's time to head back up the hills into the heart of Alfama for more views and perhaps a few good pictures. So we were actually at the cathedral, then we went shopping, and now we found this really, really nice, beautiful place. It's called Julio del Castillo's Garden. Two Miradoros or viewpoints you should visit are Miradoro de Santa Lucia and Miradoro das Portas do Sol. These two are best visited in the late afternoon, early evening, when the sun shines on Lisbon's rooftops. They're also located virtually right next to each other. These two Miradoros are located in the Alfama district, a neighborhood with lots of history. Alfama is one of the oldest districts of Lisbon and is a delightful maze of narrow cobble streets and ancient houses which lead up the steep hill from the Tejo Estuari to the castle. Contained within this diverse and charismatic district are many historic buildings including the Se Cathedral, the Castle de San Jorge, Julio del Castillo Garden and St. Anthony's Church. Originally, Alfama was situated outside of the city's walls and was associated with poverty and squalor, where only the poor and disadvantaged resided. As Lisbon grew into an important port, the district retained its lowly status as the tough and deprived district where sailors and dog workers lived. Today, Alfama has shrugged off its grim reputation, being transformed into a fashionable artisan district while still retaining its character and dilapidated charm. Our next stop will be St. George Castle, or most known as the Castello Sao Jorge. We are finally in St. George Castle. This is huge and we're gonna have a good time. Let's go in. This is a historic castle located in the Pregasia of Santa Maria Maggiore. St. George Castle is one of the biggest and most emblematic thing to do here in Lisbon. Human occupation of the castle hill dates to at least the 18th century, while the first fortifications built go as far back as the first century. The hill on which São Jorge Castle stands has played an important part in the history of Lisbon having served as the location of fortifications occupied by Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, and Moors before its conquest by the Portuguese in the 1147 Siege of Lisbon. Since the 12th century, the castle has variously served as a royal palace, military barracks, home of the Tower of Tombo National Archiv and Museum, and now as a national monument and museum. The views out over Lisbon from the castle's Miradoro are incredible, and walking the ancient castle's walls was pretty cool. Since it was almost lunchtime, the crew and I decided to spend the afternoon enjoying Lisbon's incredible Time Out Market. We are in Time Out Market. This place has it all. Chinese, Italian, Portuguese, all that you really want to eat is here. 
This place has 33 restaurants and it's located in a very cool place here in Lisbon. This is Lisbon's most popular food court. You can find some of the city's best food here. The tagline of the Time Out Market is bringing the best of the city under one roof. Here you'll find roughly two dozen restaurants, a handful of bars, and even artists represented. You can create your own sampler lunch or dinner here, trying appetizers, mains, desserts, and drinks from various different vendors. In our case, we found a pretty cool place. The food was wonderful and the people were very friendly. After seeing what Time Out Market was all about, we were ready to get some more walking in around the area. While walking, we found a really cool surprise. I never imagined that we would find a pink street in the middle of the city, but we did. One street that you can count on to have a crowd and plenty of drinks in Lisbon is the aptly named Pink Street, located in Caios do Sodre and around the corner from the historic Mercado de Ribeira. Decades ago, it was Lisbon's red light district, but now this is one of the coolest bar hopping spots near the river. This place is a hidden gem in Lisbon City. It's very cool, it has a lot of places where you can have a drink, eat, and just have fun. We still had lots to discover and I wanted to get some pastel de nata and some sangria as well, so we went to Rocio Square. Rocio is the liveliest square in the city, where people stop to sit, relax and have a drink at the several scenic cafes with outdoor seating. On either side of the square are two baroque fountains and in the center is a monument measuring 27 meters high in height. It consists of a pedestal with marble allegory symbols of justice, wisdom, strength, and moderation. Qualities attributed to Dom Pedro IV, whose statue stands on top of the monument. So we are at Rocio Square, also known by Pedro IV Square. This is a great place located in Palm Line, Lisbon. You can come here, walk around, have a nice dinner, lunch, whatever. It's just amazing. We wanted to get a dessert that would match the feeling of the day. So we went and had a taste of pastel de nata, better known as pastel de Belin. This pastel is also known as Portuguese custard tart. It is an egg tart pastry dusted with cinnamon. As well as Portugal, they are particularly popular in former Portuguese colonies and in other countries with Portuguese populations. It's delicious and a must-have when in the city. We had dinner and dessert taken care of, but we still lacked the sangria. So we went to Figueira Plaza and got some. Because we are in Lisbon, and now that we are at Figueroa's Plaza, we're gonna have the traditional drink. Praça de Figueira is regarded as the third square of the Baixa district. But in the 1600s, the space was actually occupied by a hospital. Unfortunately, the earthquake of 1755 damaged it beyond repair and the space was transformed into an open-air market. Tourists are sure to enjoy the areas, open-air cafes, a farmer's market, and a bronze statue of King John I. So from Rosio Square, to this square right now, this is Figueroa Plaza. It's like maybe a one or two minute walk. It's literally next to each other. This place is awesome because you have the train station, the bus station. You can also buy some things like groceries. You can have lunch. This place is great. Although we've visited many of the famous squares of the city, we were still missing one of the most important of all. Commerce Square is located near the Tagus River. The square is still commonly known as Terreiro do Paco or Palace Yard because it was the location of the Royal Ribeira Palace until it was destroyed by the great 1755 Lisbon earthquake. After the earthquake, the square was completely remodeled as part of the rebuilding of the Pombaline downtown, 
order by Sebastián José de Carvalho e Melo, first Marquis of Pombal, who was the minister of the Kingdom of Portugal from 1750 to 1777. The day was almost over and we were exhausted, so we figured out it would be a cool idea to get a ride on the funiculars. We just got out of the elevator of Gloria. This is the main transportation here in Lisboa. It transports 3 million passengers in a year. Lisbon is known for its hills and steep streets meaning that its historic funiculars are not only highly photographed, but also regularly used for getting from point A to point B. This funicular, also called Elevator do Gloria, connects Restauradores Square with the Barrio Alto, another of Lisbon's oldest neighborhoods. It dates back to 1885 and is used by both tourists and locals. The funicular runs from the square to the top station without making any stops. The smartest thing to do is get a Lisbon Public Transportation 24-hour card, which makes it very inexpensive to use the elevator. After a nice ride and a cool picture, it was time to rest. We have a pretty busy day tomorrow. Day 2 in Lisbon started in the best way. We found a delicious place to have breakfast called Gallo before heading to Sintra. Sintra? Why Sintra? Well, because we were in Lisbon, we had to go to Sintra. That's a small city nearby and has the most charming palace that Portugal has to offer. The Pena Palace. Sintra is not very far from Lisbon. It will take you a 42-minute Uber drive. The Pena Palace is located on the eastern part of the Pena Part in Sintra. It is composed of two wings, the monastery and the new palace. It was designated as a national monument in 1910 and formed part of the cultural landscapes of Sintra, which has been classified by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site since 1995. In Portugal, they have lots of castles, but I guess what makes this one unique is the colors. It has blues, oranges, yellows. It's a mixture of everything. The Palacio Nacional de Pena is one of the finest tourist attractions in Portugal and exemplifies the 19th century Romanticism style of architecture. The palace is a decadent mix of vividly painted terraces, decorated battlements, and mythological statues, all of which stand at stark contrast to the lush greens of the Parque de Pena Forest. People from all over the world come to this palace because it's just amazing. We've been here about two or three hours and it's huge. Surrounding the Palace of Pena are forested grounds, which continue the design ideals of Romanticism, with hidden pathways, mystical ornaments, and stunning views. We stayed there the whole morning, amazed by how spectacular the place was, but since we didn't have that much time, we returned to Lisbon and had lunch in Alfama. Because we're in Lisbon and we have to try its fish, we're gonna have this amazing lunch in Alfama area. This place is for seafood lovers. Fish and salad was our best option. Yummy! One of the most famous places in the city and one of the places I really wanted to visit was the aquarium. It is not very common to go to this type of places while you're visiting a new city, but everyone talks about it, so we had to go. We are in Lisbon's Oceanarium. It's known by being the largest one in Europe. Lisbon's Aquarium is the world's largest saltwater oceanarium and is a fantastic tourist attraction, especially for families. Inside the oceanarium, there are over 450 different species of animals, which include sharks, rays, penguins, and even two delightful sea otters. Lisbon Aquarium was constructed as a central feature for Expo 98 and a second part of Lisbon's best family-orientated tourist attractions. The aquarium is located in the Parque das Nazoas district of Lisbon and is highly recommended. 
This place is regarded as one of the world's best aquariums. Our visit in Lisbon is about to end, but we cannot leave without going to the Belen Tower. The Belen Tower, Torre de Belen, was built between 1514 and 1520 in a Manuelino style by the Portuguese architect and sculptor Francisco de Arruda. It was classified as a World Heritage Site in 1983 by UNESCO. Constructed on the northern bank of the Tagus River, this tower was used to defend the city. Years later, it was transformed into a lighthouse and customs house. It is situated very close to the Jerónimos Monastery. Sadly, we arrived after the tower's visiting hours and could not enter. However, some of the locals told us that the ground floor of this architectural jewel has 16 windows with cannons. The visit also includes a tour of the pits and holes where the prisoners were thrown into. The tower has five floors, which lead to a roof terrace. Each story is connected by a small and narrow spiral staircase. Our time in Lisbon was more than we imagined. This city is charming with lots of color, history in its architecture, amazing food, and very kind young people who gave us the best tips to get around the city. We know that there is much more of Lisbon to discover. We missed a few of its beautiful neighborhoods and tourist attractions, but the good thing is that we will return and continue getting to know this authentic city. After all, we all have places to go.